First the good news, to be followed by some stupefyingly grim news, and concluding with a bit of yearning. In the latest ABC News Washington Post poll, Donald Trump's bungling of his populist rabble rousing has earned him a miserable 37% approval rating, the lowest, notes ABC News, for any president at nine months in office in polling dating to 1946. And the poll's internals are even more withering than Trump's historic bottoming out. Since April he has added 14 points to those who recognize that he's not delivering on his major campaign promises. 41% said that six months ago now 55% say so. By a yawning 53-26%, to 26%, Americans say that under Trump, U.S. leadership in the world has gotten weaker rather than stronger, and a remarkable two-thirds of Americans believe him to be irresponsible in dealing with North Korea. The same percentage say he's accomplished anywhere from not much to little or nothing as president, this for a demagogue who alone could fix everything, as he rhetorically swashbuckled on the campaign trail. Trump has not yet devastated President Obama's economic recovery, and yet a minority 44% say he's doing an excellent or good job handling the economy a 17-point plunge since the 20th of January. 11% of African Americans approve of this insufferable racist, which, to give Trump some credit, is 11 points higher than one would expect. To quote Abe Lincoln, you can fool 11% of some people all of the time, just as striking as that 34% of women approve of this insufferable misogynist. Still, underwater scarcely describes Trump's standing with women and blacks. He is indeed merely underwater among whites here he has a 46% approval rating, and only 40% among men. That's an 11-point drop among whites since the election, a 12-point drop among men, and a 13-point drop among independents as well. With dreadful numbers like those, one would think that in a heaven-sent 2017 rematch of the 2016 disgrace, yesteryear's loser, with all her faults, imagined and real, but none so odious as Trump's, would walk away with a landslide win. But one would be wrong. The most astonishing, most alarming finding of the ABC WAPO poll is that Trump runs a dead heat with Hillary Clinton among 2016 voters in a hypothetical rematch. As the Post tells it of those Americans who say they voted in 2016, 46% say they supported Clinton, and 43% say they backed Trump. If an election were held today, with the same candidates, 40% of those 2016 voters say they would back Trump, and 40% say they would support Clinton. As I said in my opening, that is just downright stupefying. But on to the 2020 general election of Trump versus somebody, assuming this racist misogynist insufferability either overcomes John Kasich's primary challenge or HASNT landed himself in one of our finer penal institutions. Notes the post of profoundly puzzling mass opinion the public sees Democrats acting mostly as an opposition party, rather than offering ideas of their own. Asked whether the Democratic Party is presenting alternatives to Trump's proposals or mainly criticizing the president, 61% said mainly criticizing. This opinion, I gather, is a disapproving one, even though relentlessly lambasting Trump is, in itself, a singular platform of boundless alternatives. My preference is for that somebody Joe Biden is at the top largely because he's a pole of thundering authenticity, but also because he's one of the few 2020 candidates I'm assuming who wouldn't go overboard in placating overreaching progressives. He is old enough, wise and grounded enough to know that for Democrats the White House ISNT one in the extreme it's one in the middle. Now I happen to be a socialist, as you probably know, but more than that I'm a pragmatist. Sends. Cory Booker, Kamala Harris and of course Elizabeth Warren, to name only three other hopefuls, have all signed on to Bernie Sanders' politically perilous Medicare for All proposal. Biden is in the more prudent camp, so he has not done so. Neither has Sen. Chris Murphy, my second choice for the party's nomination. His recent semi-dismissal of a presidential run I don't take seriously. Murphy, reports Politico, has warned against letting the party's attention slip to longer-term health care policy while the future of the Affordable Care Act remains up for debate. I think the risk is that we get distracted, says Murphy. For now, pushing for a pubic option, part of the original ACA, would be the more judicious middle route. So there you have it, the good, the bad, and, possibly, the wistful. Will the Dems unite in 2020 behind a pragmatic progressive, as they did in 2008? All I can answer is that they had damn well better.